Um, unfortunately, I can't keep this. Only one land. Let the mulligan. I will keep this one. Put this on the bottom. Alright. One great thing about this Angel of Unity is that this uh, is a party type card, so it'll actually permanently buff Watcher's Fears. So if we can draw another one of our um, wizard based cards or another one of the clerics, it'd be great. Uh, before we do anything, let's go ahead and attack it. Alright, um. We'll go for Watcher. Unfortunately, we don't really have any way to protect the board at the moment. But, I want to try to go for it because if we. Next turn with this on board, this will only be two mana. So we can hold up Dove and Veto for anything. Uh, that would sweep our board and still get in a good amount of damage. Wouldn't be great if we draw that last turn. Because when we played this, it would have permanently buffed this card. We're going to hold on to the Siren Storm Tamer because I want to make sure we can cast Dovin's Veto. Siren Storm Tamer is great for direct removal. Dovin's Veto we're going to be using for the general uh, sweepers. Alright, Iron Crag Feet, you're good. Yeah, no, I don't like Ugin. Yeah, good game, opponent, because there's our favorable wins, and that is lethal. Oh no, I'm one man, I'm one damage short. Oh, I thought I I just can't be mad. If I played Storm Tamer, it was lethal. I didn't play the Storm Tamer. Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, and all our creatures are even except for the Imperial Eagle, so. Do we still get there at least? You just won by mill the turn he would have won due to an angel ability. Awesome, that's great. Uh, yeah, that's... Oh, were you playing against the life gain deck that uh, has the at end of turn win the game if you have so much life? Because, yeah, that's definitely a thing. Alright, attempt Storm Tamer. Now we attack. This way, if the opponent has direct removal, we can counter it. Now, okay, we win. <laughs> oh, jeez. Nice to hear your game went well, also. I almost punted hard there because the opponent did have a sweeper, but it just happened to be the sweeper that we could survive. Let's see, um, we're gonna keep this. We're gonna keep. One, three in a row, but there are games it hits some snags. I'm trying to work out. Yeah, no, that's like I said, it's one of those issues when you play a landfall deck. It's you need to make sure you have the, the lands set up so that way you actually can get all the triggers that you need. But if you uh, don't draw the like the lands to the cards that trigger off the lands in the right like kind of order. The, the deck always feels really awkward. Alright, Staff's Discharge. Basically, this is, um... Oh, uh, shoot, what's the name of that? Whoa, what's that? Reckless Charge, too. Okay. Opponent's coming in hard. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a Healer's Hawk out there. Play a Siren Storm Tamer. Our opponent's going to opt. This is actually a really good card. Um, the Reckless Charge. Oh, this card got buffed. Um, so this used to only increase it by... Where are you putting that? Okay, so it's going there, so don't have to worry about sacrificing the Storm Tamer, but... No, 
Take a big hit. No blocks. Go for the land. I'm going to attack in just to get a little bit of life gain here. Do some winged words. And we'll pass the turn. During our opponent's combat, we just tap both of these down. We do it at the combat, so that way they don't get all the um, benefits of after they uh, um, play all their spells. Okay, actually, you know what? We'll go ahead and do this now. Since they're tapped out, I don't have to worry about like a, a spell pierce or something. Get Angel of Unity down. Get the Tactician down. Um, hook for one, just for the life gain, and their turn. Put it with another reckless charge that they can double up. Now the thing is, is the opponent needs to actually remember that they should target this as well. I think they did. Like, what's the predator card? Yeah, it's one three. Jump block here. Once in top deck mode. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, if you're um, looking for life sustain for your deck, um, you should probably try the um, uh, innkeeper if you haven't done so already. Because you're doing the Scoot Swarm combo with the Shy already. Uh, that will also just get you a whole bunch of life whenever that combo starts going off. Attack it and get some more life. We've managed to survive the opponent's um, initial rush of damage. Unfortunately, Dreadheart Arcanist is a bit of a threat. Allows them to replay these play with fires. This only triggers... Oh, not Wizard also. Dang it. Um, Lofty Denial. Please pay two more. Or four more. If you pay four more, I don't have to worry about your Dreadhorde Arcanist. Gonna send them. One there. Okay. I'm surprised they didn't attack with more. Alright, so. Resolve. Resolve. Um. Counterspell that one. Now, where are you gonna send this one?
Alright, he's still getting it for killing it. That's fine. Because now we can triple block, get rid of the Arcanist. We will lose one of our Angels of Unity here, but this is a must kind of trade here. Otherwise, they'd be able to replay like Opt and be able to do another thing of what they just did. Imperial. Imperial Eagle's big. We're just going to go for the aggressive play. If they get a way to chain off their spells, we are dead, but we have them dead next turn if we because of the attack we went for. Oh no. Are they gonna chain? They hit a land and an opt. Oh no. Oh no. Um, well, all of the creatures now have had their base powers adjusted. They're going to come in for a lot of damage. If we can dodge a burn spell, we can survive. I think we're still good. Because we can just chump block Soul Scar Mage. Because even if they play that again from the graveyard. Yeah. Yeah, no, we still we still live and we kill it. Good game. Woo. Oh no, we don't kill him. We'd be one short. Because they're not attacking with the, the mage. We have to jump block here. Of course we draw land. Attack like this. Hold the land is uh, something to screw with their head. Dang it. We were that close. Ah, oh. We missed it again by one point. And like I said, we had to dodge the burn. Fortunately, we couldn't dodge the burn. Uh, um, we'll keep. Ooh, there's a great uh, top deck. Alright, reverse reanimator. So we're gonna try to go as fast as we can. Fortunately, this is like literally the best thing that they can get on a turn two play, because they pay three lives, sacrifice a return target creature from graveyard to the battlefield, act only as a sorcery. It's way too good for only two mana. And the worst part is this isn't um even like one of the, the silly uh cards from uh, what, why am I blinking on the name of it? Oh, yeah, there, there we go. We're done. So, opponent finds a Sarah Emissary. Literally nothing we can do about this card. Oh, really? Calling instant. Well, that's fine. Uh, play the Imperial Eagle. Pass it back. We actually don't have any way to uh, interact with our opponent's cards except for counter spells in general. I mean, technically we have tap down, but this says that they, basically they and uh, creatures they control will have protection of whatever they name, and they name one of the card types. So instant sorcery enchantment creature. They name creature. We were done. We didn't have anything.
But this is actually Modern Horizons 2, uh, which is literally the most broken, like, sets they decide to ever print. Because they're going, hey, we're building things specifically for Modern. It's a broken set. We can build more broken things for it. And they, they kind of went a little overboard with it. Um, Alright, so we actually... I thought we were done. Um, but opponent uh, was worried about us having instant speed removals for their creatures. Because that's typically what a uh, deck like ours would run. But... We're an oddball deck. So they played against us thinking like playing to the meta. And we're not we're not the meta. <laughs> See though. Yeah, by the way, these are both modern horizon two cards. So this is actually like a deck that you can like almost self-build within its own set. Let's see here. Um, we'll just pass the turn. This way we can deploy. Let's see. Uh, yes, you're good with that. Scarab God does nothing to us. But opponent is now tapped out. You're a zombie, right? I'm planning on killing them during our turn, so this shouldn't matter that we block that. We deploy. We play Imperian Eagle. And this time, I did Map Ray. Because we have 12, even if they blocked one of our four. And we manage. Oh, right. We had more than 12, but I'm insane. We have at least 12, is what I was trying to say. Um. But we ended up crushing a deck that actually ended up getting one of their best, like, turn two, turn three plays. Literally, they got this out on turn three. But they still lost. <laughs> this is supposed to be the card that it's like completely takes away a game. And I honestly thought, oh, we're, we're, we're screwed. They're going to name this and we're, we can't play anything. They need instant. We are a creature deck. <laughs> so... If you want to actually play in the historic format and you like, I don't want to have to craft any of the rares. Well, this is a complete common and uncommon list that you can craft. And I imagine you actually have better lands than these by now with, you know, being able to pull some of the white blue uh, rare lands to help fix your, your mana base. But I was trying to show you, you can do this uh, completely free. We ended up going a total of um, five and two with the deck. That's pretty good. And the the thing is, it's all of our cards are just these little small flyers. Uh, Angel's Unity being the only alchemy one. So even if you wanted to like, you know, sleeve this up as a real deck, you just have to find a replacement for Angel's Unity, and it's not a super important card in the deck. Um, favorable wins. It, it's actually really good. Um, giving all your creatures plus one plus one to flying. Uh, the option plus one plus one that have flying. Uh, let, me, let me make sure I say that correctly. Lofty Denials gives us all that uh, early counter uh, interaction that we just only counterspell the things that either get in our cards' ways or are things that will kill us. Dovin's Veto, same idea. All the non-creature spells we have answers for. Watchers of Spheres, um, it's mana cost reduction, not the most relevant, but the fact that it gets a plus one, plus one and extra for um, one of our flying creatures to enter the battlefield, really solid, really helps. Um, Arden Veil Tactician, this is a, one of those cards that people, uh, I think, sleep on for being, like, a good card. It is only a common. Excuse me. It is only a common. It's, you can play it for Dizzying Swoop. For one white, one of any color, you can tap two creatures. It's a great way to make it so that way you don't have to worry about something blocking you or attacking in that would normally kill you. And then you can play it as a 2-3 body. It's really solid. Um, Winged Words. Great draw spell. Especially considering it's, we usually have one of these on turn one, so we can usually play this on turn two to get the draw if we don't have one of our two drop uh, aggressive cards or we can play more of our one drops. Uh, Imperial Eagle. 
just an amazing card that helps support this flying deck, because other creatures that you control flying get plus one, plus one. It has so much synergy. Um, the pose deploy actually ends up coming in really handy, because sometimes you're looking to just tap the card, get the draw out of it, play as a cantrip, and sometimes doing the deploy, not only getting the extra flyers for either chunk blocking or flying in for the lethal damage, but the life gain that it presents to you for getting one life for each creature you control really helps against the aggressive bird style decks that do exist. So, again, this is a very simple deck. Um, total number of lands, 22. And the reason why it's 22 instead of, you know, the recommended 24 lands is most of our cards are pretty cheap, so we don't really need to have 24 lands. I don't go less than 22 uh, just because we still have a case where we want to be able to either play something and hold up mana for, like, a counter spell. So that's why I'm making sure not to cut it too low. Um, hope you enjoyed the deck. I think that this one's very good and uh, very competitive for the historic format. Thank you for watching the video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more content. If you'd like to join me while I stream, you can find me on Twitch at the link below. I hope to see you again in the next video and have a nice one.